hello, 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 hello. Tonight's guest is Jim Miller, founder and host of Old Leadership Stories Media. And Jim has over three years of experience interviewing leaders, powerful leadership leaders, like, you know, we all want to be, or we all are, or we're all striving to be better, and we're all striving to be newer and fresher and come up with great ideas. He's also the founder of two successful businesses to help clients achieve profitable growth. Having worked with top tier companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Google, Jim is here to share his journey, growth, and the power of storytelling in leadership. I met Jim Miller in Dallas, Texas at the Ken and Glenn Show. If you haven't come to the Ken and Glenn show, you have to put it on your list because there are fabulous people there and you learn and you've got Ken, Walls, and Glenn, Morshower. And let's bring on today's star of the show, Mr. Jim Miller. Woohoo! All right. Thank you. There wow, is. that's awesome. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm so honored and thrilled to be here. So we met at the Ken and Glenn show. Yeah, and I also met your lovely girlfriend, Lisa Lore. And we have some pictures here from the Ken and Glenn show. Oh, that, embarrassing uh, pictures! There we go. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. What well, an amazing crew! So right in front there, in the blue, all cute is his girlfriend Lisa, and she is a ballerina. So you'll have to stay tuned to her life. And then the middle is Ken Walls and Glenn Morshower and all of our buddies. That we're there. If you look at them, we've had a star-studded event. But today's event is about Jim. So Jim, can you tell us how you first got started in leadership and what led you to launch Bold Leadership Stories Media? All right. Well, and hey, Cynthia, uh, I am excited to be here. Thank you for having me on your show today. Yeah, I love your snaps. <laughs> That's so much fun. And and great question. I ah, boy, I started in leadership a long time ago. Um, in fact, the the book that you've got, the trajectory behind you, volume one, has a chapter in it that I wrote that talks about my first. Um, it's called the knowing. It's it's really my first venture when I was nine years old into personal leadership and and becoming. Uh, becoming a leader and taking leadership role in my life. And uh, the, there's two stories in that chapter. And one of them is about my, ex oh, I was so excited about being a, a baseball star and uh, playing baseball. I love playing baseball. And when I was nine years old, I, I eight years old, actually, I went into uh, to, tr to try out. And I won't ruin the story for you, but in that chapter, it talks about my my failure, my that first year when I tried out, and then setting the resolve and knowing that the next year I was going to excel, and then putting in the work to make that happen. So it's that knowing and then putting in the work, and I, I had a, an amazing experience with that. And I, I used that as my first real um, experience in leadership. And you surround yourself with leaders. And oh, here's yeah, there. that was absolutely part of it. We were, we were, uh, you know, it's it's like getting coaches together and and having a vision, having a, a dream, really, at that point, about what you want to do and what in and putting that together and say, well, who do I need to bring on my team? to help me make this happen because nothing happens on your own, as you know. So it's, it's, it's getting for me at that age, my dad helped out. Uh, I got a coach. I, I had friends. I played, we got games together all the time and we practiced and we, we, you know, set up scenarios with each other and we challenged each other and we, we got better. And, during that process, you know, the next year I did really well. I, I had the, the highest batting average in the league and um, I got uh, a starting position with the team. I played because I'm left-handed. I played both pitcher and first base and I did a little bit of an outfield 
And I love playing catcher. I tried that too, but they wouldn't let me stay there because I'm a lefty and most of the batters are righties. And they, it made it tough for me to, to sail that ball quickly down to second base. So the, yeah, my, my tenure as a catcher was short, but I love that position too. So anyway, that was my, my real first experience in leadership. And the American dream and playing baseball and it's the best. Take me out to the ball. Oh, game. Yeah. oh my goodness. It's, it's a wonderful place for a young man to be. You really can get good values and learn a lot about the world just from baseball. Yes. It yeah. It was, that's so true. That's so true. And, and we had a great field at the little league field and it had a, a home run wall and it had an actual diamond with a grass infield that was so cool it was just like the pros but miniature so oh uh, eric was... another southpaw he oh, knew all right, eric. about you my man jim lefty power <laughs> yeah, lefty. we're all in our right mind right <laughs> right that's right oh you love base my son was a baseball player as well and he actually went on a full ride for college with that and there's oh, our beautiful gosh. patricia patricia you're in our picture did you see it Hey, Eric, put, put up um, our, our mastermind picture. Look, there oh, she is. is. There's Patricia and there's Jim and Chuck and um, Victoria and Jen and Jeffrey Wolf. And name out a few names you see. And Nick and Zena and, 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 and Mr. Um, Rizzo. And yes, yeah, Steve Rizzo. Thank you. And there's someone peeking in the back and a couple others that may not be there. Yeah. And yeah. we love then uh, uh, show the silly ones we did at a dinner one time. Um, it was Jim Miller and I playing. <laughs> it was so much fun. Cause you know, afterwards these masterminds at the Ken and Glenn show, you go and visit and you talk to everybody and you get to know everybody. So you can invite them on your podcast and learn other things. Terry Wagner. Thank you, Dr. Terry. Dr. Terry, Zena, yes, and Chris, her partner in crime. They're fabulous. It was such a great community. And Glenn was speaking. And I think in like the first 20 minutes, you knew everyone's name. And I picked up the vibe of the story and made everyone feel comfortable. And people were crying. People were talking and sharing. And phew, Everyone said it was one of the best masterminds they had ever gone to. And so oh, we have to do it again. Yes, definitely. So what yeah, inspired so you to focus on leadership through storytelling and how does it help engage your audience when you're up there in the Ken and Glenn position? Well, it's, it's a fascinating thing that everybody has a story and I love stories. I love hearing people's stories. And it's it's so much fun to to help them because a lot of times they when they come on my show, a lot of people have never interviewed before. So it's like this first time they're in business people, but they're they never get a chance to really tell their story. You know, and so this is what's a challenge and fun for me is helping them to bring that, have the, the confidence and feel at ease enough to share some of that, you know, sometimes more personal or sensitive things that, uh, that makes the story really valuable. And so that's what I love about it. And it's so much uh, fun. I started it as a, like a community service thing, bold leadership stories. I, I've interviewed about 95 people so far. And most of them are in my little town in Temecula, California. Aww. And so, uh, hey, hey, Patricia. And so it's it's really um, it, the idea is to have people who are close by physically to to get to know each other through this medium and tell their stories, and and people get to see them in a little different light. So when they meet them again face to face, it's a different conversation. And I've gotten some really good feedback about that. So that's that's a ton of fun. That's fabulous. Hi, Alex. Hi, Grace. Grace wants to know um, how in childhood made you make you love your story. How in childhood make you love story? How in childhood playing baseball did you come up with your love story for your life telling stories? Well, I, I, I yeah, like I said, I love baseball. I love success. I love 
um, the challenge of it and taking, taking that uh, challenge and things, you know, things happen in our lives all the time. Some people, you think they will, they grow up with a silver spoon, you know, but when you dig deeper and you find out that maybe they weren't really that, you know, lucky and they've had to overcome some things. And there's some things that they've never talked about, really, that you can explore when you know how to to help that conversation happen. And to me, that's what's really fun about the stories and, and developing relationships is, is spending time with somebody face to face, looking them in the eye and letting them know you really care. Right. And and sharing your stuff, your stories with them makes them feel comfortable a lot of times, or, you know, they just give them the opportunity to, to say, and you, you be interested in them. So I just love that repartee. I love that back and forth. And that's really what I get out of it. Uh, and, and I've been in, in sales, corporate sales for a long, long time. So that's really just interviewing people. So it's, it's about finding out what's important to them. And that's what I love about it. Grace wants to know how you get them to open up and tell the truth. Ooh. Well, it's it's uh, the truth. What is the truth? That's the that's always the big question. What what is the truth? And well, it's it's not always about the truth. It's it's about uh, being yourself, and you know, telling the stories that may help others get better at, at, you know, living their life. So to me, that's the best truth is being honest and investing in, and sometimes you're stepping, you're stepping out into the unknown. You know, you, you don't know who's listening or who's watching or anything. You're just telling your story. Right. And if you have this, if you have this fear inside of you, that's keeping you holding you back to me, that was my biggest hurdle in, in, in doing these these shows like this and doing a lot, doing my show. In fact, I had to go through a period of time where I, I was just not, I was, I get, I was deathly afraid of getting, you know, on the camera, just taking the little phone and like we all do now all the time doing these little lives. I was, I was really afraid of that. So what I did was I, I made a decision. I took a leadership role in my life and I said, I'm going to make, I'm going to make this decision. I'm going to do a hundred of these lives. And I, I set the goal. I'm going to do a hundred of these and they're going to be three to six minutes long. So I'd get up in the morning and go for a walk. And I do these little walkie talkies and I set my phone up with topics and I just pick a topic and I go no pre thinking about it or anything. And I just did them. And the first 20 were hell. I was like, Oh man, I hate this. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But I did it anyway. And then after 20 of them, they started getting a little easier. And then after 80, it was like, wow, this is kind of fun because I'd have to start gotten, getting people to listen and chime in and make comments and stuff. So it got to be a little conversation. And after 100 of them, I thought, wow, this is cool. I need to go to the next level. So that's when I thought, OK, let's do a podcast, a video podcast. And that's when I came up with the idea to do bold leadership stories. And basically, that's uh, my community service that I do. And it's like, like I said earlier, as a, as a local show, and it's it's focused on local people. And I've interviewed everybody from you know single moms with a business to corporate titans uh, on that show. And it's it's just amazing to me that they all have wonderful stories to tell, and they've all got. And a, a beautiful energy about them and excited about life and sharing that was, I was really honored and blessed for them to share their stories with me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to many more of those events in the coming months and years. Um, Dan Altmeyer says that Jim has a great ability to make people comfortable in sharing their stories. So you said um, you interviewed Titans and the moms and the single moms what are some of the common leadership qualities that you've noticed across the board? Oh, wow. Well, there's, there is so many, um, but you know, that's a great question because the, the, the ones that 
I think the people that have a purpose, the ones that have, they figured out their life purpose. And that's the, it's not money necessarily. It's, it's never money, really. It's that purpose in, in, in making that purpose real, bringing that into the world and, and making that purpose happen. Um, I just talked the other day to a gentleman who started um, a, a printing company and he found while he was doing his printing business that he really, he would get feedback saying, you know, I, I'd love you to be able to print things on fabric so that, and, and make uniforms. They wanted to make uniforms for local um, sports teams. Oh, nice. There was nobody, you, you could buy those uniforms, of course, from the big companies and they'd be printed overseas somewhere. And that's, you know, everybody can do that and they're cheap. But what he did was come up with an idea and a process so that he could create really, really cool uniforms for the for the kids that are playing baseball and football and soccer and whatever they're doing and and make them special. And he says, what happens is magic. And this is his this is what's his purpose is. What happens when they put that that cool baseball hat on or they put that jersey on with the yeah with the you know the their team name and their name on the back is they feel for just a minute like they're a professional like they're they've got it all together and they actually play better because yeah. their mind they're they they've gotten that crap out of the way that's think that's telling them you know that that yeah you can't do this but just for a moment, they're able to overcome that. And that opens the door to them. Wow, maybe I can really do this. And they get better and better. So to me, that's exciting to see that those kind of stories and those kind of purposes. And that's leadership right there. Yeah. And they step into their power and then they exude it and pass it on to the next guy and the next guy. And you want to follow someone great. You want to be outstanding and and go into that inner part of your body, your heart, your soul, your gut right there and just woo. Exactly. That's what I love about team sports too, is like we get that, um, you, you, you can get that synergy, that group, that group momentum happening and it can go the other way too. So it's, it's, oh, really no, 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 there. Grace likes your answer. Grace Cavalieri says that's a good answer. Purpose, purpose. Purpose. And I know someone on your team who has a great purpose. Um, in fact, you're starting a new podcast that's starting this Friday, ladies and gentlemen. He's doing the healthy, the wealthy, healthy live show. And his very first guest is Lisa Lore, professional ballerina. And she has a purpose and a story. And Eric, would you put up the picture with Lisa and I, please? And Jim, do you want to tell a couple? Uh, there is his girlfriend. Isn't she adorable? And she is a beautiful ballerina. And she's got quite a story. So you have to tune in on Friday. What time is that on Friday? It'll be, um, I think, 1 o'clock on Friday afternoon Pacific time. Perfect. Perfect. So, guys, um, if Jim gives us that information, those of you who are on my email list will pop it in so you can know where to join on to that. Uh, I think it's so exciting because she's got a great story. You've worked with other um, high profile clients like Apple, Microsoft, and Google. How did you land those dream clients? Everyone thinks those are dream clients. I think every client is a dream client. Wow. Yeah. That, well, Apple definitely. Um, I, yeah, that story was, uh, it was a, a long genesis of it. It, it started, and I think, really with that first knowing when I was, I just mentioned about uh, my baseball experience when I was nine years old, that, that I had a knowing that I was going to do amazing business with Apple computer and, you know, the big tech companies. And um, so I, I went to college, I got a technical degree, I started in technical sales, and I didn't know it was going to be Apple, but I knew that I would eventually do something significant in that tech world because it just feel, felt right. And uh, I started with a computer company in from college doing a co-op experience. And um, that was a fantastic experience before I graduated. And then when I left, um, 
a lot of things happened, but I, I ended up getting involved with uh, a company selling commission only packaging. And that was, that was really tough. I lasted in that job about six months, but I learned a ton and I rolled it over into another opportunity that led to another opportunity, which was working with uh, the, a company in the Midwest that was about a $10 million company. And uh, they were like 30 years old and they basically selling commodity uh, shock and vibration products. It's like drop shock stuff and noise cancellation stuff. And so I, I had a territory, three states. I had a book of $250,000 in business to manage and they said, go. So I just went off and I was, I, I was managing companies, the $250,000 was were companies there and I had to grow that. Well, I noticed a little while in that there were a lot of companies that weren't in that list of people that we were going after. So, and they were the, the big ones like Apple and Microsoft, Hewlett Packard, Dell, um, Samsung, Nokia, Motorola, all those big companies. And so I asked my my manager yeah hey what's going on with this why can't wh what is why aren't we doing business with these companies and he said well i don't know but and, and so i started the process of getting those companies lined up and i i set up a way to go after them and i systematically did eat, you know went after each one of those companies and this was old school before the internet yeah before cell phones but <laughs> it was like yeah you, I remember driving around going to going to these meetings and I had a you remember those Thomas guides or no. like, like this big thick book and every city had a, a Thomas guide it, and I so I was carrying around all these books and they were about you know five ten pounds each so every time every trip I went on I had to carry these maps with me or I'd get lost um, and you were doing a three state region right the three states California Nevada and Arizona so nice. there was a lot of space. Um, and so I started going after Apple. I, I went after Apple, Hewlett Packard and all those big companies. And I caught Apple first. And I, I did this whole story on how I got them. But I, I got a ride. We got a ride on the very first iPod, 2001. And it, I got a call from um, uh, one of my buddies who was managing a drop test house up in San Jose. And he asked me, and I was down here in Southern California. He was up in San Jose. And uh, it's about a, I don't know, hour and a half, two hour plane ride. And he asked me to come up. He, th he, he thought I lived up there because I was up there all the time. And he asked me, you know, this is like eight o'clock in the morning. And he, he says, hey, can you come up here for a meeting? Can we get out for a meeting? I said, uh, sure. Yeah. Because I'm not going to say no, you know? Right, right. And, and so I call, hang up with him and I call my, my manager back in Indianapolis and say, Hey, I got to take a plane up to San Jose, like right now. And at that particular time, the company was only $10 million company. They were stretched to the limit and they didn't have enough money. They were, they were like, um, they were doling out pencils and paper clips in the office because they were trying to save money at that time. Uh -huh. So asking yeah. for a flight last minute, was a big deal. And so it, it, I finally got clearance. And so I went up there, had a meeting and happened to be two engineers that he was working with from Apple. And they were working on a very secret project, which happened to be the first iPod. Ooh. And so, and, and we had, we created a solution for them within the, the next 72 hours, we had a solution for that. And they were two weeks ahead of uh, Steve Jobs getting up and doing his famous talk about, you know, introducing the iPod. And they were really nervous because they weren't passing their tests at all. And they had looked worldwide for a solution. And we came in with it and saved the day. And that was amazing. It was, it was so cool. And all that happened because of this knowing. It just happened. And after that moment, our business took off with them. We, we went from zero to over $14 million dollars with them we got in every single product line that they produced with custom parts and we became a, a, their secret competitive advantage Woo. yeah that was wants to know what was the solution well we we created little molded parts they'd go inside 
you know, the, the, iP the iPod, you remember the, that little tiny thing? It was about this big, a little smaller than this, actually, and it had a hard drive in it. And that hard drive spun the old IBM micro drives uh -huh, yeah. before the solid state. You remember those? Yes. And they were really fragile for, to, for drop. And they couldn't pass. They, they dropped these things when they're running nine times from seven feet on the cement floor. And they have to run after that. They drop them on, on each edge, each corner, front and back. And after, and that has to run after that. And they weren't passing that test. And we were the only company in the world that could help them do that. So we got that solution in there and that opened the door for us to get involved with all their other products. And that, and then we parlayed that into work with Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, Nokia, everybody. And, uh, and that grew our business from about 10 million to over 43 million. And then we, we sold that company to um, IBM for about 123 million. So it was, it was a good, it was a good run. And it all started with this knowing, I think, because yeah. I, I had this vision. I wanted to go after Apple. And I don't think if we hadn't gotten Apple, I don't think we would have been bought by 3M. That's oh. my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. But <laughs> it's that's amazing. Don't you love yeah. those kind of stories? That's when you used to go into a building and solicit the whole building before you got thrown out. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You just you just know. I mean, somebody's going to take this idea. And I got for two and a half I would years. I used the building when I was done. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like anything. I, I was I would go into Apple every time I go up there, I'd go in the front door and ask for, you know, I just say, no, 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 no. For two and a half years, I got no, 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 no. And and then I went uh, I, I did presentations at uh, meetings. I went to um, IDEMA meetings, which are the, an association club for hard drives. And I got involved with that club and I got involved with the IEEE um, and I did presentations for them. And I, I got involved with drop houses, drop test houses in the area. That's what ended up working. And, but I did all these things. And I learned that strategy from one of my dad's friends. We were out on a, a trip, a horse pack trip. His name was Ray Eisenhart and Ray, Ray was very smart. His, his, uh, his business was inventing efficiency, uh, you know, creating efficiency for, for other businesses. So what he did to fish was, I thought, really innovative. I got my fishing reel and rod out, and I was one hook, and I was reeling, casting and reeling, doing all this work. And Ray, he, he, he just took his line. He tied a whole bunch of hooks on the line, and he stuck it in the water, got a chair out, grabbed a beer, and he just relaxed. And he was catching more fish than me. You know, so I was like, dude, what are you doing? How does this work? And he, he, she said, more hooks, the more hooks you got in the water, the better chance you got of catching a fish. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I started up at Apple. I started making, putting fish hooks out and those fish hooks were doing these meetings and going like, I would take, I would take donuts in it's try to get mm -hmm. people or I would, you know, I would go to the coffee shops and say hi to people uh -huh. you know, if, they, if they had an apple uh, you know, uh -huh. thing on it's like, hey, you know, just start making conversation and then they attempt to get to know people and develop mm -hmm. relationships. So that's the old school style of hunting new companies to do it, but it's part of the story. And it's, it's, it took a lot of time. And I was really fortunate that my, my management was patient with me. But I think, I tell you what, it really paid off in the end. I'd say. And it's so true because you know what? You never know the relationship between people. All people are important. All people matter. Uh, you can sometimes even the receptionist or the or the back in the day when they had the elevator man. Remember, they still had some elevator oh, yeah. man, and yeah. he would know all the stories, and the chauffeur would know all the stories, and you know the the man who cleaned the office was there when the owner was still working, and he knew stories, and you could just it was like a wealth of information just by saying hello. Well, it's How interesting you? you say that because that's actually part of this Apple story. I, I, I was amazed at how many 
salespeople like me would go up and actually harass the receptionist. And mm -hmm. I, it's like, wow, I had no idea. So I thought, well, why don't I make a friend of them? So I would ask them, you know, what's your favorite chocolate? Or, you know, do you like coffee? And, and I bring them something. I bring them a little $5, you know, the Starbucks card, or I'd bring them a, you know, a, a candy bar from, you know, high end chocolate. Huh? Starbucks wasn't there yet. <laughs> yeah, they were at that later yeah. on. They were, yeah, okay. up there they were. And, um, that's great. That's great, though. Bring that's them something, you know, it was like, it was, I bring them something that they would thoughtful. I think of you. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and I was always nice to them. Well, after a little while, they, they, it's helped me a lot. They would yeah. actually call these guys and say, look, you got to come out here and meet this guy. He's amazing. You know, uh, amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I, I was able to get some meetings because I was nice and I, I cared, you know, it's like, and I do. So it's, it's like, why don't you, why are you like that all the time? People who are not nice don't get what they want and they just bring bad energy into the world. Well, you were following your purpose. And as uh, Dan so nicely reminded us, what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve Napoleon Hill. So yeah. you had your dream. You conceived it. You already figured it out. You were already doing all the steps, going the extra mile, being there, and you achieved. It's a beautiful Amazing. story. I can't wait to read it in your book, Trajectory. Yeah, that's the second part. The, the Apple story is the second story in the chapter that I wrote. That yeah, is that's... a great story. I wish I, that, that's why I love to do these podcasts. That's why I love my job because you find out more about each person and the stories, the stories, the stories. Whew. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so much fun. And there's 17 people that, that give a shout out to Scotty Carlisle and um, Jason Kitamura who are, are with um, Mentor Makerspace. And they're the ones that pulled this all together. And we're publishing on October 1st. So we're rallying the troops to make a buy on Amazon on October 1st at the, the I think um, Eric had the, the link there for the book um, if at some point. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Eric. The, yes. that could, that's where we go to make your make. I'll buy or buy buy some for your friends too. It's a great book. It's it's basically 17 stories of people going from a lot of them are from tragedy to victory. I think that's kind of a, a way to think about trajectory. And it's it's upward from tragedy to victory. And uh, it's there's some incredible people and authors in there that are sharing what you know, their intimate stories about life. Uh, so it's, I think it's, a, it's an incredible read and well worth getting yourself a copy. Absolutely. Um, Eric Flintnori is already getting that one. Awesome. Um, Thank you, Eric. So just to clarify for people, what role does storytelling play in effective sales and marketing? Just in case they didn't get the extra mile lesson yet. <laughs> well, I I like I think telling telling stories and and getting people who you're working with to tell their stories adds a much more um, effective dimension to a conversation. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember stories a lot better than I remember facts and figures. And so, going going into a a new relationship with someone with a story to tell makes you memorable. And if you, if you, if you add value to their lives with your, their story, and it may not necessarily be anything to do with what you're selling. In fact, it's probably better if it doesn't mm -hmm. because the goal isn't to sell them something at that point. It's to, it's to develop a, a relationship, you know, some trust and get them to want to see you again. So it's just all these little micro steps. The process of selling is is little steps and walking in the door and thinking you're going to sell something to somebody the first time. <laughs> it just doesn't work. So uh, telling stories and having some, you I mean having 
several stories that you can pull up and talk about and and share really adds a dimension and uniqueness to you. Number one, very few people actually do that well. And mm -hmm. two, any story that you come up with will be different and unique because it's from you. So that makes you different and unique and you'll stand out even if you're selling a commodity. So it's coming up with those, those little stories that add spark and interest and life and joy and fun and experience, you know, fishing stories or stories of, you know, success turned, you know, failure turned to success, um, stories of challenge, you know, all those, all those little nuances and things that you've experienced in your life, bring those to the table because those are so valuable that people want to know. Yeah. The things that you're passionate about. Sandy Archer says, hello. Hi, Sandy. Um, hey, Sandy. I, I actually got my first million dollar order in LA at a trade show. Yeah. Um, it was called magic. It was the men's sportswear show. Okay. I, just let the customer talk. I actually barely said anything. No one could believe that I got the paperwork signed, sealed, and delivered for a million dollar order. There it was. And I, you know what? I was just passionate and listened to him. And and I, I didn't push. I just was. And then, guess what? I got sold out. I was running out of stuff to sell everybody else. It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Good problem to have. Well, that Beautiful so love. Yes, it was just an amazing. I have amazing stories on that, just like you said. And it's just your passion. It's uh, but how important is resilience in leadership? So once you once you get it, now you have the resilience to pass it on to others. And how do you foster it in your clients? Oh yeah, well it's it's that's part of the discipline of leadership. I think is staying with it and and being consistent. Consistency that should be that should be set up I, I people talk about it but it's kind of a secondary thing to me consistency is it should be the law of consistency those that are consistent with the right things tend to do much better over time and it's it's being in the moment and deciding to be consistent and staying with it all the time you know just being that way being predictable and delivering, I think that's part of the leadership role, whatever it is. I mean, it's just, it's hard to be consistent. That's one of the biggest challenges that I have right now, other than getting, you know, shedding my self-limiting beliefs, being consistent at doing my podcast, being consistent at following up, being consistent at you know going out and saying hi to new people and being consistent with Know, coming up with fresh ideas and doing the research and the back the behind scenes work that nobody sees that mm -hmm. get on stage like this you you're ready and you're ready to go you know and you've got good questions and you've got the the energy and the you know the the verve to make at a great show and entertaining for people who are watching right so it's it's all about getting, being in there and doing it yes yeah, and starting you know that the starting part that's another big one people think they can't do something because of some stupid reason and i i can say that from my personal experience my stupid reason was i was afraid to talk into this and once i was once i overcame that and fear all this stuff opened up i mean last week i talked to a group of business people um i it was one of my first in-person talks about leadership and artificial intelligence. I mean, who knew? But it's like it's like the, the opportunity came up. And so, so I studied about AI and I actually went out and bought a bunch of stocks so I could learn about it. And I just got into it really deep. And, and it was a great talk. And now I have some cool stocks that are growing. So ah, that's it, awesome. It, Do you have it recorded? It, we'd love to we love to view it. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to see. I have to see what they if somebody recorded or not. I just got up and talked and it was uh, it was interactive. I love having interactive talks. I'm not somebody to get up and just talk. I just, I love the repartee going back and forth and asking questions and, and having a conversation. To me, that's much more valuable.
and feeling your audience, seeing, touching, and getting a hug at the end. Like the big applause. Yeah. And you can you can you can educate your audience and show them the way the down the road of AI. And at the end, what was your result? At, at the end, they all are more interested in AI and aren't so afraid of AI yeah. and they're learn more. Yeah. You, I have, you know, it's like this this big thing now where you chat GPT and everybody's all into that. And that's cool. And and there's some people that are into it and, and doing things with it. And there's some people that are starting to dabble with it and some people that are afraid of it. And that audience had some of each of those people in it. So my encouragement was to embrace it. It's not going away and embrace it and learn about it and and figure out how to make it your friend instead of your enemy. Because there's there was fear there, too. You know, it's going to it's going to take my job or it's something like that. And it's like, well, but yeah, it could. But I in my lifetime, I've been this is my 66th year. Say that 10 times fast. 66 years. And good number. over my time, I've seen a ton of stuff happen. Everything with technology and you know we've like i remember when the personal computer first came out that everybody was afraid that the sales people would disappear you know that well they won't need sales people anymore because these computers are going to do all the communication and it's like okay here good luck with that never happened it's never gonna happen and so but i did have to change you know that computers did change the 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 process but it's still a process so you learn how to do it and you figure out where your value proposition is and you have a passion for that and if you don't find something else you know so it's just a it's a disruptor for sure but it's it's a good in a good way and I, my call to action was to embrace it embrace that ai as a leader and and use it as a as a valued partner in making your business and your life experience better. So that was that was my talk. It's beautiful and it makes your life better and your passion, whatever your passion is, will give you the fuel to get up in the morning and jump up and wanna go do it. So Kevin said, that's me afraid to get out of my comfort zone starting to change that. And I'm so glad that you are Kevin because you know what? You'd still be in black and white TVs and waiting for the doctor to call you on your dial phone if you <laughs> jump in the bad wagon. <laughs> Horse-drawn carriages and all that. Um, you've uh, found that multiple businesses. So how you said being consistent, how do you prioritize your time and effectively do all those ventures, Jim, and still stay well, consistent with your podcast and your business and your other responsibilities? Well, I can't say that it's it's has it's a lot of work. It's diligence. It's you know putting in the the effort and the time, developing the relationships. But there's keys. There's leverage points that I've learned, and um, it's the leverage points. I've I've decided there's five shifts that I that I did to my life. Mm -hmm. um, first shift was becoming. You've always always got to be becoming something better you've got to you've got to learn what you're how you learn and figure out how you can feed your mind to become better and stretch yourself all the time go step out into the unknown once a day do something that you're not comfortable with and if you get in the habit of doing that your life will get better because doing those things opens doors that you didn't expect would open and didn't know were even there and it also gives you confidence. And the more evidence you've got, you put together towards becoming uh, a better at being you, the better your life is going to go. And it's just things start coming to you that you didn't even know were there. So that becoming is, I think, critical. And that was a shift that I, I've made. The second one was um, longevity. I have this body. We all have a body. God has blessed us with this this body. We give this is an entity that is so smart. I had no idea. I was pushing it so hard and and making it do so many things for me and it it did it did everything I asked until one day it didn't and it basically filed divorce papers on me. I was running 17 hours sometimes 17 hours a day 
you know, average was probably about 12 hours a day working. I wasn't exercising. I was, I wasn't eating right. I gained weight. I was stressed to my gourd, you know, with stuff and I was letting myself be stressed and, uh, I wasn't sleeping. So all those things compounded. Finally, my body just said, dude, I'm done. So I'm going this way. If you want to follow me, <laughs> you're welcome to, but otherwise I'm out of here. So I had, I had to make it, you know, stop and make a decision. It was really a good thing for me. That was back in 2020. Um, so that was the second shift is, is deciding that I'm responsible for my health. And I have this one entity that I get to, to, to be in and it serves me incredibly well. And I need to honor it and bless it. And, and give it what it needs to prosper. So I've changed my diet. I've changed my, I exercise. I lost 50 pounds. I am in fact uh, going through a, a program right now where I'm fasting to help it uh, clean out cells that are tired and get into what's called autophagy. And, um, and, and so I'm honoring my body by understanding and learning and doing things that will give my body longevity. And then the other part of that is uh, audience building. This, the third shift was audience building. And so that's why I'm doing my, one of the things I'm doing with my podcast. I think everybody in today's world should be building an audience of some kind. It doesn't matter who you are. We've all got access to at least one of these and we can share our, our life, share things that are exciting, things that are fun, share your tragedies, develop relationships. And that's the audience. That's your, your peeps, right? And we all need to, to have an audience and, Church is a great place for that, but there's other places too. So I, I always encourage, and that's something I'm proactive at it now is that shift is building an audience. The third thing or fourth thing for me is generational wealth, the fourth shift. And I went through a period of my life where I lost everything and I was in massive debt and I had to, you know, I had to get things right. So I'm, I'm back on track now and making things work. And so everything's settled in and I'm, I'm on a, a growth path again. But um, I tell you what, it's no fun when you get yourself to a point where the, your body gives up on you. You're in massive debt. You've got people calling you, asking you to pay them all the time. And, you know, you're, you're worried about where you're going to get your next meal. That's I, I for a period of time, I was I was buying my food at the, the local food bank. And uh, I haven't told many people that, but that that's like, that's a big deal for a lot of people. Even somebody who you think is, is, uh, you know, got their act together. Sometimes they go through hard times and, and getting that help was so critical for me to, to help me stay on, on a track that I could grow from again. Um, so uh, building generational wealth now and helping people understand that they have the power within them to grow a wealth that they had that they at this point probably think is unimaginable but with the technology and tools that we've got today and with the help of people like dan altmeyer in his book um you know aging gracefully planning thoughtfully that he written and published recently yeah so this is a, it's an amazing little book it looks small but this is a mighty little book dan's a tremendously gifted and very experienced uh expert in uh financial planning strategies and um helping people with long-term care plans and and you know we never know what's going to happen right so having that plan and building that wealth so that when you do live a long time you'll have money to spend and not be in destitute going to the food banks uh y'all you're welcome Dan, great book. I, I love what you're doing. And um, and if you don't yeah. have the book yet, you can get it, Cynthia 500, and you can get it for five bucks. I don't think All the right, time yeah. is out yet. So ladies and gentlemen, I see Patricia's waiting for hers to come. So go ahead and get on the bandwagon because I wish I had it when I was taking care of all the people that I took care of. But now we have Patricia is waiting for the book. 
And Jim, she says, Patricia says, you are a calm inspiration. Love this interview tonight. And now we're ready for number five. Yeah, the fifth one is community service. And I think that one for me has been the most impactful and the most important. And I, I, I advocate what I'm doing is I've found a, a couple of groups that I vol go volunteer at. And um, one of the ones that I love up here in Temecula is, is up at the plateau where they, they have a nature preserve. They have 2000 acres up there and it's virgin land and it's beautiful. And they bring inner city, they bus inner city school children up into the wilderness and give them an experience seeing the birds and the critters and, and what that is like and, and, and listen to the silence and, and see the butterflies natural and, and see some foxes and snakes in their natural environment. And, uh, oh man, it's, it's so rewarding to, to be able to help people experience those things. So that's, and, and, but to, in order to volunteer, it's so easy. There's so many, I'm sure in your town, wherever you live, there are nonprofits of companies, people who are running companies that could use some volunteer help, even if it's one day a week for a couple of hours. And what I advocate is look them up, do a Google search, who's in my area that, and find something that you could do for them to help them to be and go there. Don't sit in your computer uh, on your butt. Go there. Get off your butt. Get outside. Get in the outside. Get in the air. Feel that the 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 wind in your face. Get rain on you once in a while and do something that that matters and volunteer. Don't expect anything in return. I tell you what, when you do that, you'll get so much, so much in return. You can't, it's priceless. The the relationships that you'll find and the, the experiences that you'll have and the people you'll impact um, and the way that you'll impact them, you can't purchase. So it's that, that community service shift for me has been the biggest thing. So yeah, go out and, and do something, even if it's again, an hour a week, just do something. And so those are my five shifts. And and getting those together, that took a lot of time for me and a lot of strife and struggle to, to finally decide, okay, those are the most important things for me to do on a consistent basis. Every week, I'm doing those five things, something, I'm progressing those five things for me and other people now with that. And, and this uh, uh, new video podcast that I'm doing that I'm interviewing Lisa on Friday, that's part of that. It's... Uh, Ah, fantastic, Patricia, a Rotarian. Yes, service above self, absolutely. Oh, yeah, so such good work. There's a, ro a bunch of Rotary folks here. They're all great people. Um, fantastic group, and it's it's uh, it's just taking those those concepts and putting them to work in your life every every day, being consistent with it, and eventually that builds into your life, and creating a foundation like that, where you've got, you know, talk about um, creating boundaries and guidelines for yourself. Bob, my friend, Bob Donnell has, uh, is, has a, yeah, yes. a, yeah you know, Bob, he's, yeah, he's of course. got a class that I've taken called Connectology. That's fantastic. Yeah. And he's, he's written um, a book and he's got tons of great concepts and ideas and building that, 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 those boundaries for yourself that say, okay, this is what I'm, this is what I'm about. And having that confidence really helps you stay focused and directed towards where you want to be in life. He goes all out heart, body, mind, and soul. He's out there on the streets at the, at the site of an emergency situation, just being there, just listening to the people. Yeah. It is, it is amazing. Amazing. I've, I've stopped into his show a few times and yeah. he is like a quiet spirit that just knows all and he can really just look at you and you'll be like, oh, he gets me. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that man. He's, he's, I've gotten to know him. It's, it's, uh, it's really 
a blessing for me to to have be able to to speak with him. I'm I'm involved with his, uh, his Zoom calls during the week every week, so I get to say hi every week. And he's oh, always coming up with some fun, some some thought, some deep thing that it's like, wow, I never thought of that before. But it's it's really helping me to grow and become a better better person. And you are, and so many people here that and are going to watch the replays love your energy. You're doing a great job. So you're gotten over your fear piece on this. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can see Jim Miller also on the Bright Business Talk Show, where he has purpose-driven conversations, and that one's live each Monday at noon Pacific time. And then his uh, Wealthy Healthy Live show, the first official episode, will be this Friday, which is in two days, with Lisa and Eric. Lenore was asking what time that was, Pacific time. Um, thank you, Eric. I think it's going to be at 1 o'clock Pacific. 1 o'clock yeah. Pacific. Yeah, Perfect. I, it'll be 1 o'clock Pacific. And here is where his new book's coming out. And Jim Miller's asking if you would please purchase it on October 1 so he can play with the algorithms with Amazon because that's how you get your bestseller sticker. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a little bit of a hack, but it's everybody can participate and definitely appreciate what you're doing. And we're going to be uh, any proceeds that we get from the book will be going to a local charity. Um, yes. And another thing you can do to help Jim is write a review on the book and help his other people that have wrote their stories in trajectory and give him a five star rating. And that Thank goes you. a long ways to helping the book get known and get out there because we That's need everyone cool. to help share it and tell everyone about it to make the ripple effect like the ocean, the waves come and, uh, and keep them Absolutely. clapping gently and then make it roar and have everyone get the book. Yes. Any questions yes. from anybody? I love the participation from our audience today. Thank you so much for being here. Join us next um, Wednesday, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You'll get your invitation. You can go onto my website and put it in if I don't already have your email. Um, we've got Jim Miller's book there. Just put up that website one more time in case anybody's missed it. There you go. Any final closing words to motivate people and keep them on their purpose and consistent and healthy? Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you for this. This experience has gone so fast. I, I would love to say that if your, if your purpose has not been uh, fulfilled yet, then you need to get busy. Find your purpose. Find your purpose and get busy making that happen and, and, and experience it with joy, with love and appreciation and gratitude. Go into the world with those emotions and at that level, be excited and fulfill your purpose. That's that's my wish for everybody. And it's easy. Get out a piece of paper and just make a list. What makes you happy? What are you good at? Yes. What are you not so good at? Just make your list and it, you can just do circles and it will appear. It will reveal itself to you. And you know in your gut, you know that place way down there, you know the answer. Remember, that's where you get your joy of your life. That's where you become your best self. That's where you help people. And that's where life just soars and you can fly on the wings of angels. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you all. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And check out um, Lisa Laurie on the Wealth Health Live show on Friday. And love you all. Thank you. And thank you, Jim. You are fabulous. You'll stay thank in the you. green room and we will chat with you. And we Great. say adieu. Follow your purpose. Make good decisions. Be happy. Be kind.